It's sometimes argued that in educating people, school and university level, they ought to be aware of the fact that there are differences of opinion, that there are controversies about things. Take, for example, biological evolution. And in the United States of America and some other places in the world too, there is opposition to the idea of biological evolution. People have ideas about, say, creationism or intelligent design. And the argument is that these ought to be taught too. Let's broaden the picture a little bit here and ask whether this means that if you were teaching astronomy in school, you should also teach astrology, or in medical schools that the ancient theory of demon possession ought to be taught and so on. And the minute that you broaden the conversation in that way, you begin to see that in fact, trying to be inclusive and fair and to have uh, all sides of the argument, all the objections that people might raise to something, is in fact going to interrupt and deeply pollute the educational process. We want to take our very best, most disciplined researchers about the world, across the range, in the natural sciences, in the social sciences, in the humanities, history, for example, and equip people with a, a good, solid, mainstream understanding of these things. And if that's done well, and if they pick up these things, they will understand why it is going to be a waste of time and a distraction. If they're studying medicine, for example, to learn about ancient demon possession, or if they're studying astronomy to learn also about the astrological influences, allegedly, of the stars, they'll begin to, to, to realize why that is the case. But very often, this is a distraction. In the particular case of evolutionary theory and biology and the alleged competitor theories of intelligent design and so on, it's only because of the institutionalization of those views, the fact that the churches still exist and that religion is still a major factor in human society, that people think that that is a respectable competitor. But when you broaden the picture, you see that it isn't. My own answer to the question, should these controversies be taught as part of education? They certainly should not be taught as part of science education. They may be an occasion in the civics class or at one point in the history class or the sociology class where they might come up, but they're not serious competitors to genuine inquiry and they ought not to be given the validation of, of being so.